Hey guys, it's Woody the Unexceptional Gamer, and this is Mail Monday, a weekly series that's not so much about the gameplay, but instead is about your questions and my answers to them. A quick note about the gameplay, I recorded the wrong thing, and I looked in here and there were two games and they weren't the ones I meant to save, so I thought it might be interesting just to show off some games where I didn't cherry pick my best stuff. Uh, the first one's not that good and the second one is pretty good. This is, that happens to me when I play, probably happens to you. Anyway, here we go! <laughs> Am I a toxic friend? I know it's late, but please read. I want to start off by saying you're awesome, and the advice I get from Mail Monday is priceless. Seriously, digits for days. <laughs> nice, nice. Anyway, what I want to ask you about is if I'm a toxic friend. To be perfectly blunt, I think of myself as a nice guy. I'm fairly popular, I hate being mean to people, and I always include everyone. Last year I met this guy, let's call him Bob. At first I thought he was really cool, and I truly wanted to be friends with him. Not long after, we were eh, maybe halfway into the school year, and we realized he wasn't cool. Of course I didn't mind, I wanted to stay his friend, but lately he's been kind of clinging to me and my group of friends. It seems like I'm picking out every bad trait he has, and I don't know why. I know everyone has faults, and in my circle of friends we all understand each other's. We, as my friends and I, started making fun of him, but in a playful way. He keeps calling us dicks and saying, I don't know why I'm friends with you guys, but I think he knows the reason just like we do. He wouldn't have any friends without us. How do I tell him I need some space? I don't want to come off as a dick, but... It's really starting to irritate my friends and I. Am I a toxic friend? Any sort of reply would be awesome. Thanks. A loving sub. P.S. Woody, keep up the good work. So I thought this letter was interesting because I never hear about this from the perspective of the toxic friend himself. Instead, I always hear about it from the perspective of the guy whose friends aren't treating him well, right? And, and if you don't know what a toxic friend is, let me define it for you. It, it's this notion, like, have you ever had a friend who was kind of a jerk to you, who, who maybe didn't treat you well, who didn't act like a true friend would, didn't show any loyalty? Maybe they're nice to you when the two of you are alone, but you get into a group and all of a sudden he's a completely different person, he or she, that, um, I don't know. A toxic friend is one that's not really a friend and seems to take as much pleasure from giving you pain as he does from being an actual true friend where the two of you have each other's best interests in mind. That's a toxic friend. And this was really cool because I got to hear, he's like, look, you know, I, I really just don't want to be friends with this guy anymore. And I don't want to be the toxic friend I'm being. I instead, I just find myself thrusted into this position because... What else am I going to do? I have an answer for you. And, you know, like so many of these things, it's a little bit painful, but I think you should stop inviting them to places. Or maybe if you say, you know what, this time it's just going to be, you know, me, Jimmy, and Patrick, and, uh, you know, leave them behind. And, and hopefully it doesn't take too long before he realizes that, like, you know, the friendship is, is kind of breaking up. If it comes to being really, really harsh and you, you get stuck and that you have to do that, then I guess you have to do that. But this thing, like so many other relationships, it needs movement. And even if it hurts a little bit in the short term, you still need movement. You, you need, you got to break away from your current rut because what you're doing, just being kind of nasty to a guy in hopes that he'll figure it out on his own, isn't really cool like it's not working out well for anybody you got to get to a position where instead you know even if it involves talking to him like you know what i think this time it's just jimmy and patrick and i and and we're gonna we're gonna go out without you if that would send a pretty clear signal to me and it would hurt in the short term but it's better than him spending his entire high school years as a hanger on next to you Hey Woody, I asked my crush out and told her how I felt, and I got dumped, if you can call that dumped, I think she didn't like him back, but I feel relieved and thankful to you about it, I just wanted to say thanks, I could have never gotten the guts to ask her, but I have, and although I may have failed, it's all thanks to you, subbed and always subbed, you're the best. I picked this one just because it was another example of movement, you know, it's... Sometimes it's better to get not liked back than it is to sit there and pine over somebody for ages. And in either of these relationships, whether this one, the potentially romantic one, or the previous question, which was just a bunch of guys uh, with non-romantic intentions, then it's like, look, man, it is better to have just, you know, move the heck on. It is better to, to find out than to sit there and be in a bad relationship forever. Bad relationships can be ones in which the people are linked, but they're not good, like the first one, or whether, you know, it's, it's a halfway relationship where you're loving her and she's not noticing you, right? Those things are not, uh, are not good relationships. So 
um, movement is better than being stuck in a bad place. Girl on girl. Woody, I'm not normally a viewer of yours. However, my brother was watching one of your Mail Mondays, and with my situation, I thought you could help me. I'm a 16-year-old, typically girly girl from California. What I'm about to say is hard to even put into words, but I think I'm falling in love with another girl. You might be thinking love at 16. You're kidding. However, I feel so strongly about her, it's untrue. An hour doesn't go by where I don't think about her. She's always on my mind. I've been going through a really tough time recently and feeling extremely depressed, and sometimes she's the only reason I get out of bed in the morning. I'm not gay or bi, and I don't think of women in that way one bit, but I feel that way about this girl. Is this normal? Is it a phase? She's the only good thing in my life at the moment, and I don't want to tell her how I feel and lose her. I'll be nothing. She's straight, but I guess so am I. What do I do? It would mean a lot if you could put this in Mail Monday. I seriously need your help. Thanks, Woody. Yeah, so, are you gay, right? Um, I remember it, it was Hutch who, who got into a lot of trouble, for, uh, not in trouble, but he got a lot of feedback once saying that gay sex doesn't make you gay. And he's kind of right. You know, you would think that it does. You would think that somebody having gay sex is, makes you gay. But what makes you gay is the desire to have gay sex, right? If that's your thing, right? If, if, if you're wired in such a way that you look at a guy when you're a guy or a girl when you're a girl and you wish that you were having sex with that man or woman who is the same as you, that makes you gay, right? If you wish that you were having sex. Now, you didn't mention sex in your entire letter, right? All you really said is that you're kind of crushing on a girl. And, like, this isn't abnormal either, and that doesn't make you gay. And you didn't even say, like, some sort of desire to bed her. Huh. Guys get man crushes. That happens, right? You know, if you're a guy and you're watching this, you've probably had some sort of thought process in your head at one point or another where you thought, like, man, this guy is perfect, right? He's big, he's strong, he's witty, the girls like him, and, you know, we're friends, and, you know, he's everything that I wish that I was. That happens, right? You know, guys get these guy crushes where, you know, they think that they wish they were that guy. They like being around this guy, and it, it doesn't make them gay. They don't want to have sex with him. They're just whatever guy crushing on him it happens and that kind of sounds like the situation that i'm hearing from you like i i kind of feel like you're saying you know woody i she she is the most amazing thing that i know of does this make me gay and i'm not hearing anything gay about you i'm all i'm really hearing is that you found a girl that you think is amazing and um you know that you're not feeling particularly amazing yourself right now that doesn't make you gay um on the other hand, if you'd like to have sex with her, then that does. And, uh, and you know, you'll have some decisions to make. If she's straight, I don't think that I would come clean about, you know, those, those feelings of yours. Because I, I think it's going to hurt the relationship. In the interest of time, I'm going to paraphrase a bit. 14-year-old guy from Britain meets girl number one. He likes her. She likes him. He gets her digits. Things are going well. Also knows girl number two. They work together. He likes her as well. This makes things complicated. Here, let's get into the letter itself. I can't get girl number two out of my mind. I like girl number one a lot, but she's called a sket by most of my mates because she's gone out with loads of boys in the past. I don't judge her, but it's hard when your friends do. However, girl number two doesn't live near me. So if I go out with her, I'd struggle to see her. And not only that, but I think my friends would probably judge her too as she has a messed up background. Please, I need help. What do I do? Any help would mean the world. Choosing between two girls. We haven't talked about this in a while. Um, yeah, you know, it, it's okay to use the physical part. You didn't even mention it, by the way. You didn't mention one was prettier, thinner, hotter, or whatever than the other one. I thought that was interesting. But, uh, you know, that's a viable way to distinguish between two people, I think, when you're dating. What is not a viable way to distinguish between two people is letting your friends pick, worrying about what your friends will have to say. That stuff is crap, and you know I don't want you to, to do that. I, I don't want you to be thinking about friends when, when you go through this process. If you weren't 14, I would go into this spiel about finding the right mate for you. I would go into this thing saying, you know, find the girl that supports you and wants the best for you in life. Find the girl that makes you better than you were already. But you're 14, and... You know, like, I don't mean to downplay teenage relationships. I know that the feelings are real and they are strong, but they are also tend not to be permanent. You know, you're not looking for a wife at 14. You're looking for a girl to go out with. And you should go out with someone, you know, who 
you have fun with. You should go out with someone who is right for you. You should go out with someone who's going to make you a better person. Um, you know, that's what you're looking for. You know, does one get better grades? Does one, um, you know, smile and make you feel good about yourself while the other makes you feel insecure? You know, pick the one that's the right fit for you because she makes you happy. And certainly not the ones that your friends like. Yeah, screw them. <laughs> I know bros be horrors, but they're not being bros if they're down in your girl. Thank you.